Okay. What is the knee? The knee actually is shown right here in the graph. So the knee is the severity of the threshold curve. So if I put this to zero, you can see that it is actually more angular. And that means that it's more of a harsh threshold. If you bring it all the way to one, you can see it's more of a smooth hill. So that means it's just gonna be a little bit more gradual. It's gonna be a little bit softer to the ear. You might want it as a more angular, a harder cutoff on the knee, again, if you wanted your sound to be a little bit more aggressive. But what if you just wanna softly control the dynamics? Well, use a smoother curve on your knee. Now, some compressors don't allow you to have this type of control. So in this case, you have it, it's really handy, and you can just get that much more specific when you're processing your signal. Let me show you an example. So I'm gonna put the knee, I'm gonna make it more severe. Okay, now I'm gonna make it as gradual as it can be. Listen specifically to the kick and the snare. Okay, this is on the gradual knee. That's on the angular, more of a stepped knee. Doesn't it sound like the kick and snare is a little bit more aggressive in this setting? Now, that's very subtle, but it can make a huge difference in a final mix in how this sound is translating to the listener. Okay, let's go back to the meter. So what is the attack and release? Well, the attack is the amount of time it takes the compressor to respond to the transient. So once the transient has crossed the threshold, how fast or slow does the compressor react to it? Now, since this is a digital compressor, it has a very fast attack time. It goes all the way to zero milliseconds, which means it would happen instantly. Most hardware compressors are not gonna be able to re respond that quickly, even if it was an FET compressor, which are known to work with very fast transients. Generally, 15 milliseconds is actually an incredibly fast response time. So this one can go all the way down to zero. Now, again, what effect does this have on the sound? Well, let's listen. Okay, so there's our favorite loop again. Now, when you're at 15 milliseconds or below, that means it's acting essentially immediately as the transient is crossing the threshold. So it's actually kind of cutting it off. Um, maybe you want to do that. Maybe you want to round it out or square it out. You want to make it more of a squished, a flatter sound so it sits in the mix. But let's say you wanted those transients to actually, maybe you want the transient to actually get through and you want, to, you want the compressor to work on the decay of the sound so you can increase the sustain of the hits. Well, I need to make my attack slower so that it allows the transient to pass and then acts on the decay of the sound. So let's do that. Okay, right there, I can hear that the transient is getting through already. Let's go back. This would be slicing the transient off, and this would be letting it pass. So when we let the transient pass, it again, it doesn't add as much pressure to the sound. It's just kind of a cleaner, more of a transparent approach because we're not, we're not artificially slicing off the attack of the sound. If we bring the milliseconds to very low, it's gonna add a little bit of pressure to those transients. And again, if we dial that in perfectly, it can be just the right thing to add a little extra movement or a little bit more energy 
to our signal. But if, if it's too much, if you're cutting off too much of the transients, it can actually lose energy and it can become kind of stale and boxy and it can have too much pressure in your eardrum and that just doesn't sound good. You have to use your ears. Always use your ears, but in general, that's what the attack does. So what does the release do? Well, the release is once the compressor acts, so once it has passed the attack stage and it is attenuating the transient, how long does it do that for? Is it a very long release so it stays acting as the sound occurs or does it come down quickly and release very quickly? Well, some compressors have an auto setting, once again, so it'll actually measure it for you. And so this is the best setting to use if it's available and you don't have a specific thing in mind that you want it to do. If you don't have an auto button, well, let's see. So if you have a fast release, that means the compressor is just barely going to touch your signal and it's going to jump off. It's a much faster acting reduction. If you want to increase the sustain of your notes, you want to have a slower release time because the signal is going to decay, but the compressor is still going to be acting on it. So actually for quieter sounds, it can make them louder over time and this increases sustain. So let's try it with our drum loop once again. I turn the auto off. Okay, so let's make the release very fast. Now, here's another tip. When you're working with rhythmic material, this is where you wanna use the VU meter because you can see when the needle is jumping back down to zero, this is actually your release time. So since we're working with a very rhythmic drum beat right now, if I can match the needle to travel at the same time that the snare and kick reset, that's exactly where you wanna have the release for this part. So let's try it. So obviously that's too fast. So what I'm looking for is when the needle goes back down to zero, I want it to go back down in the exact rhythmic interval, the time between the kick and the snare. So it's still too fast. Okay, now I'm too slow. This looks pretty good. I'm at 23 milliseconds and that sounds good to me. Again, you have to use your ears and it really depends on what type of signal you're compressing. 